thanks to a trend. Gone so hard into NFTs. But you just took a little time to DJ in the metaverse. I'm Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is my NFT project. For the last year, it seems like you couldn't get away from hearing about them. Anywhere you look, it's NFT this, NFT that. Get married on the blockchain. Sell your house as an NFT. A weird one. If you own a home, NFT that home right now. But I feel like slowly, we've kind of stopped talking about them more and more. At first, I figured, well, I've been going outside my house a couple times a month now, so maybe it's just me. But then I looked a little deeper, and boy, do I have an NFT for you. We look at this little screenshot of Google searches for the term NFT in the last couple years, I'm not crazy. Ever since the beginning of 2022, we've seen an absolutely lethal drop in interest. So as a ruthless capitalist landlord monster, the question for me becomes, is now an insane opportunity to get in the market, scoop up some crypto punks for the low and get rich quick when the market comes back up? Or is this a forever dip? Because despite what the average Lambo man on YouTube will tell you, not all pointy lines on a graph come back up. Okay, so there's a few huge concerns I want to cover before we come to the final verdict. First off, and hear me out here, like 99.9% .9 of all NFTs are completely useless, which isn't a popular opinion, but one that I think has a little bit of merit. Some may disagree and say that no, all NFTs have at least one use case and it's to express myself and use this piece of art as my profile picture. There's nothing new or revolutionary about that. People have been using cartoon animals and little avatars as their profile pictures since the beginning of the internet. I used a cat for my Facebook profile picture in like fifth grade 10 years ago. Am I some sort of web 3.0 visionary because of that? Well, we, we don't want to rule that possibility out, but... Not really. Next argument, someone might say that, no, some NFTs have a ton of use cases. Just look at Board Ape Yacht Club, look at V Friends, look at the Nelk Boys Metacard. And so let's actually do that. From the arguments that I've read online, people will claim that the utility behind the apes is the fact that you can breed them and have a mutant ape, and you can also adopt an NFT Board Ape dog. But just because I have one useless thing and I can breed it to create two new useless things doesn't give this initial one utility, right? But that's not the only utility that the Board Ape Yacht Club boasts. They also have Board Ape holder only events. There's like a yacht party for holders. Now they're trying to get into Hollywood with a movie. They're also planning an ape holder dating app, which <laughs> for that last one, I, I, I I just think they're gonna have a problem with the ratio. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure the events that this bored ape can get you in can lead to some decent networking opportunities. But my whole thing is, you don't need blockchain or web 3.0 to have all of these features. All of this utility can be replicated through a simple QR code and a little membership monthly payment website that's gonna take you like 30 minutes to set up. Actually, no, I'd like to retract that statement. It probably wouldn't take you 30 minutes because you can use Patreon and do that in like 15. Now, the only difference is that this membership website would be much more difficult to pitch as an investment. So maybe that's why people like your V are so passionate about this. 90 days, I have done $91 million in revenue on my VFriends NFT launch. It would be a lot more difficult to pitch a regular membership website as an investment to your audience than it is to say, hey, this image will get you all these perks, but you could also sell it down the line for a profit. And what makes this even worse is that with most of these NFT projects, your image isn't actually embedded on the blockchain, but rather a link to that image. And so if something happens to that URL, to that link, and it's no longer active, what happens then? You can't just edit the blockchain and put a new link in, right? But my whole point is all these projects will launch as some sort of little character and then grasp to prove that they have some sort of utility. But absolutely none of the utility is utilizing the blockchain for anything revolutionary or new. If none of these perks require Web 3.0 or the blockchain, it's not nothing new then why would these NFTs have a reason to succeed? We realistically don't need every QR code to be an NFT. QR codes already work pretty well. Why would these event companies wanna introduce new complexities and new issues into their current systems? And so whenever having this conversation, this is usually when the gaming argument kind of comes in and people will say that gaming NFTs are the future. And I absolutely and definitely bought into this at first. On the surface, it looks like it could work, it makes sense. And I do think there might be a future there, but it's not so clear when you look a little deeper. I mean, for 
Kickstarter is one of the biggest, if not the biggest video game distribution services. Steam has banned games that utilize NFTs and crypto. And most actual gamers don't want video games to have anything to do with NFTs because people are already tired of video game companies squeezing as much as they can out of them through different in-game purchases. There's games that have failed because they followed this, we're gonna try to squeeze as much money out of our players as we can strategy. People don't like pay to win games. And also why should my Fortnite skin or CSGO Karambit have to be an NFT? Is there really much I gain from that other than having to pay extra gas fees? I mean, what, what's gonna change? But that's just one side of gaming NFTs, which is implementing them into regular games. The other side is games that were specifically developed for and revolve around crypto. But these games right here, they're just not fun. The only reason people play them is because there's this allure of potentially making real money from them, but that kind of wears off quick when you realize you're making under minimum wage and barely cracking a profit. And if the price of the in-game currency plummets, you're out of luck. I personally tried like the biggest NFT crypto game, which is Axie Infinity. And it was cool for about the first hour, but that's only because I'm very interested in crypto and the whole blockchain space. I don't think I'd ever play it if it wasn't crypto related. So maybe one day there will be a fun NFT game, but if I'm a video game developer, what motivation do I have to implement NFTs into my game? And on top of all of that, we're seeing the SEC cracking down on more and more of these crypto scams. And we're now even seeing some influencers being mentioned in these lawsuits. Suit. So I'm glad I didn't hop onto that bandwagon, but bro, the, the money that some of these projects were offering was nuts. Even to this day with the NFT interest dropping, I'm still getting like three, four emails a day from different projects asking for a promotion. And the money is insane. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars per promotion. But the point is the SEC could be the final straw, the final fatality punch that ends this whole thing. And the issue with that is that a lot of NFTs are starting to share a lot of similarities with securities like stocks, which need to be heavily regulated. Something like CryptoPunks is fine. It's just art. It's a collectible. But once you start building DAOs on top of the NFTs and you introduce staking and redistributing royalties, you're kind of getting into the securities territory. Combine that with people promoting NFTs by promising future returns, and you're basically in securities territory completely. NFT, board bunny. Money man. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. The SEC provides a framework for analyzing whether a digital asset is an investment. And it consists of what looks like three parts here. A, are you investing money? Yeah, you're paying for an NFT. B, is it a common enterprise? Yes, you and everyone involved in the NFT have the same interest, right? C, reasonable expectation of profits derived from the effort of others. Absolutely, people are buying up NFTs in hopes of the price going up because of the utility that the teams behind the projects will implement into them. So if the SEC will start regulating this space, marketplaces will have to take down a lot of listings and a lot of legal problems are gonna arise. We've kind of seen something similar to this in 2017 with ICOs where the SEC started regulating bigger projects like Ripple and shortly after, the entire ICO market absolutely plummeted. And most of those projects never came back. The pointy line stayed down, even though years later, the Bitcoin price soared to new heights. I think ultimately, NFTs will have some more hype waves down the line. Sure, I would buy a CryptoPunk or a Bored Ape if the price absolutely plummeted, but that's just because those are kind of crypto memorabilia and have this OG status. But in my humble opinion, I believe that 99.9% .9 of NFT projects out there right now will absolutely plummet and never come back. The only new projects I can see succeeding are Dink Doink, Crazy Do, and Dope Gorillas, which are the sponsor of today's video. Now I'm just kidding, but my mindset when it comes to this, I think the only new projects in the NFT and crypto space that could have a possible chance of succeeding is if they create something absolutely new with Web 3.0 and blockchain technology, or if they create something that's gonna drastically improve from having blockchain and Web 3.0 implemented into If them. the utility of a project can be replaced by a QR code and a membership website, I just don't see how it could succeed long-term and implementing NFTs into video games doesn't necessarily make them better. I don't know. Tell me where I'm wrong in the comments, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.